Greetings to you all in the precious name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a privilege for me to come and worship the Lord with all you saints this morning, especially with Pastor Sibu Thomas and family, you know, Pastor Brother Finney Abraham, and family who's been a wonderful host to us in the city of Oklahoma, uh, Brother Finney Oman, uh, you know, our Kotara connection, you know, Alex Vertical Chan, and going back to our Andaman Nicobar days, you know, Sabu Chan, what you call it, you know, Oman, and Sunny Chan as well, good to see you all. And it's a privilege this morning to worship the saints with, you know, the Lord with all you saints. And I bring greetings from Kerala Christian Fellowship in Vancouver, Canada. And I'm joined with my wife, Sinu, and my kids, Abigail and Daniel. And without taking much time, you know, I would like to get into the time that's allotted to me in the message. And I would like to read a few verses from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 9 to, you know, 15. 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 9 to 15. And I'll read it for you. David and the 600 men with him came to Basar Valley, where some stayed behind. 200 of them were too exhausted to cross the valley, but David and the other 400 continued the pursuit. They found an Egyptian in a field and brought him to David. They gave him water to drink and food to eat, part of a cake of pressed figs and two cakes of raisins. He ate and was revived for he had not eaten any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. David asked him, who do you belong to? Where do you come from? He said, I'm an Egyptian, the slave of an Amalekite. My master abandoned me when I became ill three days ago. We raided the Negev of the Kerithites, some church belonging to Judah, and Negev of Caleb, and we burned Ziklag. David asked him, can you lead me to the, to the raiding party? He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to my master, and I will take you down to him. And this morning while I was sitting here, the young brothers asked, you know, do you have a title to this message? I said, none. But now when I think about it, maybe I'll add a message saying saved by grace, which is our testimony that we are all saved by grace. And here we read, you know, maybe if I go a little bit back here, you know, David is running away from Saul. He has taken shelter at many different places. Finally, he's in the land of the Philistines. And we read, he's made friendship with the king of king there, Achish. And once King Achish is going to fight against the Israelites. Now, David is a trusted person for King Achish. When he's going to fight, you know, on their way, David and his men had joined the battle. But then the elders of King Achish said, don't get him in the battle. He's part of the Israelite, and he might turn against us. So King Achish sent him back. Three days on his journey back, when he's coming back to Ziklag, where he was living, we realize, we know, we understand that the Amalekites had attacked that place. We read, they burnt everything down. They took the wives and children captives, and they've taken everything away along with them. Here we see the distress of an anointed man of God, David. You know, we read he'd received the anointing, but he's running away now for his life, running away from, you know, Saul. He's running away, taking place in an enemy camp, living there, but now he realizes that his wife, children, and all the people that were with them have lost everything. And we read, David and his men wept loudly and they cried till they had no strength left inside them. One of the verses after that we read, the people that were along with David, they were not thinking about stoning David. Think about the distress of an anointed man of God. You know, there is a king who's trying to kill him. He's in an enemy camp. His own people have turned against him now to stone him. Dear brothers and sisters, Many a times when we look into our lives, we are coming to situations as such where we think we have been running away for our lives. We have been running away to make our living, to do some things. But our own trusted people, when they turn against us and we feel there is no one to help, we read in this verse 
chapter, same chapter, verse 6. But David found strength in the Lord his God. And dear brothers and sisters, this morning, let me tell you, many a times when we feel people can stay beside us and be with us, oh glory, when we lose our strength, indeed, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help in times of our trouble. People might fail, but we know our Savior, our God, who will always come and be our ever-present help in trouble. He inquired of the Lord now, and he asked, can I go and fight the Amalekites? God answered, go and chase them. He took his 600 people. He's going for a fight against them. Now we read, 200 of them got tired, and they stayed back. 400 people, they're marching on with a mission. On the way, they found, that's the story we just read here, they found an Egyptian. He's lying on the field, and they bring him over. We may ask, what has this David has to do with him? You know, someone is on the field, why do you have to bring him? He brought him over. And then we ask, you know what? He asked him a question, who are you? He says, and I'm an Egyptian. And then he says, he stares his story, and he says like this, I was part of the army of the Amalekites. And you ask him, what was so good in him? The Egyptian man will say, listen, I'm a young man, capable, I was able. My king, the Amalekite king, thought I could fit into his army, and he recruited me into his army to go and fight the battle. He found something good inside me that he thought that I could do things for him. He recruited me and he paid me part. We went, and he says about few things that they accomplished. Went and did some battles, fought some battles, won some. He says, and we came to Ziklag, and we burnt Ziklag down, and we took people captives. But on the way, this master realized, the king of the Amalekites realized, I felt sick, he says. I felt sick. And then he says, he realized that I was not good for anything anymore, and he abandoned me on the field. He left me alone so that I could die there. My dear brothers and sisters, listen. This is exactly what the world can give us. You know, they would see something good inside us, and they would say, you could be helpful and could do things. Come join and be part of us. But very soon, when weaknesses creep in, when things we feel will not help us anymore, when the master of this world sees there is nothing good inside you, you know what they'll do? Very soon, very shortly, they'll abandon you. You ask the prodigal son, and he will say like this, I had the wealth. I had a lot of friends with me, but once I squandered the wealth, I had nobody left with, them, with me. Everyone left me alone. Dear brothers and sisters, this is exactly what the world can give us. Nothing more to expect, nothing less to expect. But in that time, he says, he abandoned me in the field so that I could die there. And now walks in this man, David, and he finds him there. This morning, let me ask you, dear brothers and sisters, isn't that our testimony too? Won't we be able to come and share this as well, that we were all, is that something that we can relate ourselves to? Read the book of Ezekiel chapter 16 and verse 3 to 7 onwards, and I'll read it for you. You know, this is what the, Lord, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, confront Jerusalem with a detestable practice and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says to Jerusalem. Your ancestry and birth were in the land of the Canaanites. Your father was an Amorite and your mother a Hittite. On the day you were born, your cord was not cut. Nor were you washed with water to make you clean. Nor were you rubbed with salt or wrapped in clothes. No one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of these things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field. For on the day you were born, you were despised. A charge against the Israelites. And this morning, dear brothers and sisters, gathered in the presence of God, redeemed by his precious blood. When we look into our own lives, are we not able to relate ourselves to this as well? Are we not able to say hallelujah, where no eye had mercy upon me, where no eye, hallelujah, looked upon me, where I was not good for anything, where I was cast away and thrown aside to die, where my life, life meant nothing. I am so fortunate there were priests who walked by. There were Levites who walked by. There were many people who walked by me, but no eyes fell upon me. 
But this morning, sitting in the presence of God, you and me have a testimony that we can share together. We can say that this good Samaritan walked by me. Hallelujah. We wa he walked by us. Dear brothers and sisters, he did not just walk away, but his eyes fell upon you and me. His eyes fell upon you and me. Dear brothers and sisters, you know what? He stood by my side. Hallelujah. And then you know what? He spoke one word. What is that word? He says, then I passed by you and saw you. You know, verse 5, no one looked on you with pity or had compassion enough to do any of things for you. Rather, you were thrown out into the open field for on the day you were born, you were despised. We were despised people. And then I passed by you and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live, live. One word that he spoke to us, dear brothers and sisters. He spoke and he said, I have come to give you life and life in abundance. Because he lives, you and me can live tomorrow. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Isn't that a testimony sitting in the presence of God this morning? Because he said, live. He spoke a word unto us, live. He came to give me life and a meaningful life this morning. How can I sit in the presence of God and rejoice today? Hallelujah. How can I sing unto my Savior who's redeemed me by his precious blood? Isn't that our testimony this morning? Are we not able to relate back and say, yes, he spoke that word and he said, live, live. And here we come back to the words that we read. Book of 1 Samuel chapter 30. He brought him. You know what? What he did? He spoke unto him. Our master spoke unto us. And he asked him who we are, and he spoke his testimony. And now we read verse 11. They found an Egyptian, brought him to David. They gave him water to eat, water to drink, and food to eat. Listen, this David, when he found this man, the first thing he realized was he's weak. He hasn't eaten anything. He needs to regain his strength. Amen. Glory. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, there is a Savior who knows you and me very well. There is a Savior who knows our weaknesses very well. There is a Savior who knows what you and me are going through very well. Listen, our loved ones and our dear ones, mammy, our spouses, do not know exactly what we go through this morning, but I thank and praise my Savior and Lord who knows you and me very well. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what he's going through. He brought him close. You know, first thing he said, he realized that he had not eaten anything or drank anything for a few days. Few days. And surely he knew one thing, that this man would die. My dear brothers and sisters, listen. If we don't drink of the living waters, which is Christ himself, if we do not live empowered in the power of the Holy Spirit, in a Christian walk, in our life, our, there is a spiritual death indeed. Amen. But dear brothers and sisters, this morning our God, he opens up with his arms wide open and says, come unto me all those who are thirsty. On the last day of the festival, he stood up and he said, all those who are thirsty, come unto me. Are we thirsty today? Paul says, I want to know him, and I want to know more about him. This morning, he calls with his arms wide open, and he says, come unto me. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we cannot just live back on our previous experiences, our Christian experiences. But if we realize we don't have or we have lost certain things, it is time to surrender and say, God, revive me again. Revive me again. We read like this. The word that is used up here. He ate and he revived for he had not eaten or any food or drunk any water for three days and three nights. Dear brothers and sisters, glory. Can we drink of this living waters which is Christ himself? Can we come into his spirit and feed ourselves with this word of God? He calls and he says, come and be revived. Can we pray unto God, say, God, revive me. Revive me and come, God, I'm thirsty for you, God. I'm thirsty for you. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a wonderful Savior. We have a wonderful Savior. And you know what he says? 
who do you belong to, where do you come from? And then continues on, and he says, verse 15, David asked him, can you lead me to the raiding army? Look what a transformation in his life. His previous master abandoned him, saying, not good for anything anymore. You are useless. I do not want you anymore. But dear brothers and sisters, David found him, had him revived again, and says, come, join my raiding party, because you could be useful for me now onwards. Dear brothers and sisters, isn't that our transformation in God too? Hallelujah. Amen. This world might have said and looked at us and said, you're not good for anything. You cannot do it. You're not capable. You know, where we would have been cast away and said nothing. Dear brothers and sisters, listen, we have a wonderful Savior, a Lord God, who says, come, join me. I need you. We heard in prayer this morning, Harvest is plenty, but laborers are few. And what he needs is laborers like you and me that would come and work in the presence of God. He says, I could make you useful. Come, can you join me? Come, can you join me? Dear brothers and sisters, as we sit in the presence of God this morning, aren't we able to say, God, I thank you that in your eyes I'm useful. That in your eyes... You find me precious. Where the world had cast me away so that I could die. Where no eye had mercy upon me. Where they had put me aside. I am so fortunate that you made me the son of the king of kings and the lord of the lords. And by your precious blood you have redeemed me. And have brought me to the house of saints this morning to worship the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. And finally we come and we say it's like this. You know verse 15. He answered, swear to me before God that you will not kill me or hand me over to the master for I will take you down. There is a solemn oath or a covenant that happens there. We come back to the book of Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 8 we read. Later I passed by you and I looked at you and saw that you were old enough for love. I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your naked body. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. Amen. Hallelujah. You became mine. We sing Malhalam songs and we read, you know, he promised that you are mine and we became his. We became a solemn oath, a covenant that we made in the presence of God. This morning, dear brothers and sisters, don't we live under that solemn oath? Don't we live saying he made a covenant with us that he will never leave me anymore, nor forsake me. David said, come stay with me and swear to me an oath that you will be with me and come be with me. Dear brothers and sisters, blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Hallelujah. I'm an heir of salvation. I'm purchased of God. I'm born of the Spirit. I'm washed in His blood. And this morning we can all come and say together, this is my story. This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. I'm an heir of His purchased. I'm purchased by His precious blood. Wax solemn oath that He made unto me, that He will keep me. Like Paul says, I have entrusted Him one thing. And I know whom I believed. And I know that he's able to keep me to the very end. Make a, he made a covenant with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I thank God that we are his and he is mine. I thank the church members for giving me this time. And especially Pastor Shiba Thomas for giving me this time. And I request you all to keep us in your humble prayers. May God bless each and every one of you with this. Amen. Amen.